First, I'm uh, really delighted uh, to be here. Uh, I didn't visit uh, America, I didn't play in America for uh, 10 years. I was stupid enough to, uh, you know, to um, believe that there is no one to talk to in this country. You know, I uh, tended to believe that uh, you all, that's the way you're, you appear in Europe. I realize that it's very stupid of all of us, you know, there are plenty of people here that are interested in humanism and think are ethically orientated. And I met quite a few wonderful people in these three days. Uh, and I'm really delighted to be here and thank you to Hadija and Jason and Avi and every, everyone that contribute to this event. I'm going to talk to tonight uh, about the discourse of solidarity about jazz and jihad. When I was a young jazz musician, America was my promised land. I was sure that sooner or later I live in downtown Manhattan, like a jazz musician. My all the scriptures were the old Blue Note albums, Prestige. My rabbis. I'm a Jew, so I talk about rabbis. Yeah. <laughs> Mentally and physically circumcised. <laughs> My, uh, by the way, I, I, I just got my foreskin back from the Israeli government. <laughs> uh, and this is, this is very important. This is very important. No, it was very important because now they have genetic engineering. They know how to transfer uh, foreskin, to transform foreskin into soldiers. This is why so many of the Israeli soldiers look like dickheads. And, and I, I just have it here with me. My, it's very small. No, no, I, I continue. Uh, <laughs> this was a comic relief. <laughs> However, my rabbis were buried, Cannibal Adderley, Busy, Bill Evans, John Coltrane. It took me quite a few years before I realized the jazz was actually a socially motivated movement that there was a civil that there was a civil war a civil a civil right battle here I didn't realize that that was made jazz into such a powerful music it took me some years before I realized that actually Coltrane Bird Dizzy, Miles, all those great people, my heroes, <sighs> sacrificed their life on the sake of beauty. It took me many years before I realized that this was their jihad. And it took me some years to understand the jazz is a form of jihad. And my jazz is my personal jihad. And I'm not afraid of saying the word jihad. Because jihad is a beautiful thing. It's the ultimate devotion. Lately, I was engaged in quite a few discussions about Iraq, Palestine, and Afghanistan. 
and we all happen to ask, what is common? What, are the co- what is the common denominator? And it's very easy to say, America. Thanks God, more and more people understand now that it's not only America, it's America fighting the Israeli wars. For saying just that, five years ago, I would be, and I was, or everyone that would just say it, you know, would be denounced as an anti-Semite. Two weeks ago, Palestine, Palestine Chronicle, one of my favorite magazines, it's an American based in Seattle, it's an online magazine, made a poll. Now, 95% of the readers of this magazine are anti-war Americans, some like 3,000, 4,000 a day. It's not a lot. They made a poll. They asked, do the, is the Israeli, does the Israeli lobby run American foreign policy? 80% said yes. 15% said no. 5, 4% were undecided. Ladies and gentlemen, 80% of the anti-war campaigner, campaigners, I will say campaigner, I'm sure, I'm sure that there is more than one, realize that something is really wrong here. Something is devastatingly, devastatingly wrong. Another poll that addressed with the same question, the kind of American people came up with a shocking result. Out of 10 Americans, four believe that America has become an Israeli mission force. Now, you all live in America. I've just met a a Zionist that was very proud about this fact. He's here, he's probably going to say something later. And I don't want to talk about it. Because it's clear. It's clear. I want to take it one step farther. And if you really want to read about it, I really suggest that you buy James Petras' book. Or you can check James Petras on the net as well. Or you look into the Marshimer report. It was published in the LRB in London. It's devastating. But I want to take it one step farther. I argue that actually what is common to Palestine, Afghanistan, and Iraq, and God forbid, Iran and Syria, because IPAC's publicly lobbying for a war in Iran, the AJC, the American Jewish Committee, is overtly lobbying for a war in Iran. I argue that what is common is not actually the American policy, not the established Zionist reference, it's actually our dismissal our negligence. The fact that with such a scale of atrocities, with 80% starvation in a concentration called Gaza, with more than 650,000 innocent people dead in Iraq, we very much do not care. Obviously, the people, it's more than likely that the people in this room do care. I heard that 70% of the Americans 
people are against the war. Where are they? The majority of the British people are against the war. Where are they? To be brutal, they don't really give a fuck. And this is something that I really want to understand. In the leading days to the war, the anti-war movements managed to get millions of millions of people to the street. I myself was in a demo in London, four million people. Police said two. I counted four. All over, in Washington, every capital, every town, people in the street. Now, 650,000 Iraqi dead, millions of people displaced. The crime is established. There's never, WMD has never been found. It's clear that Bush and the Mossad and Blair were lying. And we cannot even get 1,000 to this rate. We can get no one. And this is where I stand up and I want to challenge the concept of solidarity. Because I'm not very impressed. The first, I don't know the answers, I can just discuss it with you and I'll be delighted if you challenge my ideas, as long as you don't throw tomatoes, tomatoes, you say tomatoes, yeah? Um, the first concept that I thought of is cultural clash. We like it, cultural clash. There is a cultural clash. And within this concept of cultural clash, it is us who are failing behind. It is us who cannot establish a humanist argument. And this is very interesting. Why can't we establish a humanist argument? Because we are trying all the time very much like Blair and Bush and our Zionist enemies to tell Arabs what they should be, to tell Muslims what they should be. So the Marxists amongst us will tell Arabs, hey, let's talk about working class politics. And I say, sorry guys, but the Industrial Revolution didn't make it to Gaza. Can you bring something more sensible? The cosmopolitan amongst us will tell the Palestinian, oh, now you know, nationalism is kind of old, you know. So we take from the Palestinian nationalism, what are they left with? The liberal, um, the liberal people amongst us tell Muslims and Arabs, I say it's always you have to say Muslims and Arabs because the Iranians are Muslims but they are not Arabs, it's complicated. They tell them, oh, you know, we love you but just drop your religion. Basically what we are telling them, we love you as long as you stop being Muslims. We love you as, as long as you become European post enlightenment, progressive people. In other way, we don't like what you are, or who you are. This is not a good start for a solidarity movement. And by doing it, we are not really different from Blair and Bush, who want to liberate. They want to liberate and we want to secularize. I don't.
My favorite psychoanalyst is not my psychoanalyst. I don't have a shrink at the moment. My favorite psych psychoanalyst, Jacques Lacan, said, tells us that love means loving yourself through the other. What it means, it means that you meet a, a girl and you think that you love her, you actually love yourself. You instrumentalize. Think about it, it's quite clever. Talking about solidarity, it's exactly the same. We're doing exactly the same. We are engaged in solidarity with ourselves on the expense of the Palestinian people, Iraqi people, Afghani people. Basically, we are engaged in masturbation. And if this what masturbation is, it is not surprising that we are not a mass movement. Masturbation is something that you do alone, not in a mass movement. As I said, masturbation, and I probably want to see if it appears here. Nothing, there's not, nothing, nothing about... Now, what I would say is that I'm getting to the end of my talk. And I really think that it's pretty clear that within the concept of solidarity we are engaged with we cannot or yet to be able to bridge the gap between our materialistic self-centered worldview and jihad and sacrifice and devotion we cannot understand people who are totally devoted to their soil you're not so sure whether we can understand why Palestinian may want to return to their land because we've moved from Denver to New York you know it's not a problem for us you know we just call a moving company and we move but some people on this planet and I admire them are feel some strong bond to the land and I'm sure that there are quite a few in America that feel the same it is it becomes clear to me that the traditional left non-dialectic Marxist thinking cannot really help us to understand and to establish a healthy discourse of solidarity. I may as well say that there are quite a few leftists and Marxists Leftists are not necessarily Marxists, yeah? People who understand that the war here against oppression, the war in Europe against oppression, is very much the same war Bin Laden is fighting. If there is such a, you know, I'm not so sure that there is such a thing, Bin Laden, you know? It may be a fantasy. But whatever his, theme, his, whatever his idea stands for, whatever his idea stands for, their war 
is our war. Those who take your sons and daughters to war are your enemy. It's not the Iraqi people. The Iraqi people are your brothers. The Palestinians who are oppressed by the same people that oppress you are your brothers. And to stand here in front of you, to talk to you, to talk to myself, to do it with my music, this is my jihad. And I think that a very healthy way into this discourse of solidarity is for each of us looking rather than into politicians. Politicians doing well, they maintain their careers. We have to look into our own personal jihad. And by the time we do that, we can help ourselves and we can help the people we are destroying. Because at the end of the day, the crime in Iraq is done on your behalf, in your name, as much as it's done in my behalf and in my name. That's it. Um, so we'd like to open it up for questions. Uh, uh, the main thing is just, of course, you know, if you, if you disagree with a lot of things, just maybe I'll be respectful. No, no, if, if you disagree, we don't, if, only if you agree, you are entitled to ask it. <laughs> so, does anybody, does you want to start out? I uh, have a question for Dima. Yeah. Okay, I have, uh, I, I, I'm an old-fashioned leftist. Yeah, it's okay. I, 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 no, no, and I, uh, yeah, I'm not, not ashamed of it. For sure. Uh, old-fashioned leftist. You know, there was a period of time when, there was a period of time when we struggled, as you were talking about, there was a period of time when we struggled, there was a period of time when we struggled, <laughs> Of yeah. You know, those Georgia uh, uh, so organizations is that uh, uh, strong in Lebanon, uh, you know, many think the, uh, the part of the Israeli invasion of Lebanon was to drive out Habash and, and, and the PLO, of course, and so forth, and to terrorize the population, uh, whatever, um, whatever take one has on the invasion. But, but then the, the left has sort of petered out. Mm -hmm. You know, it's petered out all over the world. And the Soviet Union fell. Mm -hmm. At least some, there was at least some lip service on the part of some huge state yeah. towards these liberation organizations. There's mm -hmm. some lip service, even if it was, even if it was For sure. fraudulent or what happened. For sure. There's at least lip service. Yeah. Now, that's all gone. So it appears to me that the, that the religious organizations, Hamas, so forth, have picked up the mantle, have picked up the baton of these. Of these Absolutely. And... Uh, I, and I suppose the, the question is, you know, how the, the left, I think, is a little bit uh, perplexed as to how to approach this. I, 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 I totally, no, I totally agree. Yeah, it's not that the, nothing happened and the left, they became, the left a kind of a network around the world became kind of paralyzed and stupid. There is a process. And you basically presented the historical process, the collapse of the Soviet Union, the move from a, a, a national liberation um, organization into, into a, a religiously orientated uh, liberation movement. Now, the whole issue here is that if we support the Palestinian people, and this is the struggle that I'm mainly engaged with. We, have, we are supposed to support the Palestinian people regardless of their political choice. So if the Palestinian people democratically elected the Hamas, we have to stand by them. And this is indeed something that left, traditional left, found out to do. Now, I'm not talking here against the left. I'm sure that there are quite a few leftists here. I'm trying to tell you, hey, wake up. The world is changing. 
One of the most common criticism of, uh, the, of, of uh, left Marxists, uh, you know, they say, they really, they have the book and there is reality. When reality doesn't fit into the, doesn't fit into the book, they change the reality. So, I'm aware of this, of this danger. We have to be very careful and to move on. To understand, yes, these people are now, they move. And it is very possible that Arab nationalism is Islam. Arab nation is Islam. This is something that we have, may have to, 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 to take in. I don't say that this, this is the case, but it is more than likely that it is a possibility. Any more? Yes, sir. Yeah. Uh, yeah it, it looks like the question to me is, how do we build a movement in within my lifetime? You can see I've got white hair, so I'm in a hurry. Um, a movement that can actually end things like Zionism and the oppression of people, um, or at least the oppressive part of Zionism, if not entirely. And it seems to me that, based on what you were saying yesterday and today, that you're hoping for people to, in a loose sense, I would say, come to Jesus, to recognize the other, mm -hmm. to have a religious conversion to where you respect the humanity of all human beings. It's not necessarily religious. The religious to, to respect the other is a kind of a humanist, a, a humanist uh, a take on reality. To think, to think ethically and humanly. Can you say humanly? Humanly. Yeah. Uh, rather than politically. But you were talking about the great mass of Americans and British and Europeans and probably most people all over the world who do not give a damn. And how do you get to give a damn? This is a, big, this is, this is a, this is a very big question, and as I said before, I'm not a politician. I don't have answers. I don't try to suggest resolution, you know, a resolution, resolutions. I'm a thinker. I'm a musician and a philosopher. I went, Arab here tried to take me yesterday to a um, kind of democratic uh, to, to a conference of the Democratic Party. And you know, it's too early in the morning you not know, to see politicians. Now. I went to drink coffee because I was interested to see America. I, 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 I wasn't here for 10 years. Now, it's something that you see every day. I'm sitting with Abel in the kind of table. Within a second, a lady, a, wait, a waitress, she gives us the menu. You know, I come from Britain, but I ignore the menu for within five seconds. Are you ready? No. Ten seconds later, are you ready now? No, but I realize that I'm on the wrong. Yeah, 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 yeah. coffee. She, gives me, she, she got us the coffee or whatever. Two seconds, is everything all right? No, I took her seriously. Said, yeah, it's actually okay. After four seconds, is everything all right? Uh, yeah, it's more or less the same, yeah. It's, I just, you know, I... I'm kind of trying to digest now. And then I realized that everyone else ignore, ignores her. She's nothing. She's talking. I was stupid to take her seriously. Because I live in silly UK. It's like when Americans say, hi, how are you? Exactly. Then I realized in the morning, I just go, you know, the lobby. And I go, hey, good morning. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, hey, do we know, you know? No, this is America. You don't necessarily mean what you say. It's okay. It's okay. It took me, I said, let's kill her, just walk, you know? Why do you, you know, you don't mean what, it's okay. But if you don't really mean what you say, how can we expect people to be ethically orientated and to think and to feel for other people 
They can just say, ah, yeah, I'm, I'm against the war. Yeah, it's okay. It's like saying, is it okay? Is the coffee okay? Then I'm against the war. <laughs> you know, this is the problem. And it's a, now, I'm, so, I'm sorry. It's, I'm, I'm, I'm probably saying the thing that are the most obvious for you. But it is down to that. Now, how to find that? I don't know. I don't know. And this is, again, jihad. Because when we listen to John Coltrane, there is truth there. He really, really means what? I don't know if you think about what he's going to play. Ah, oh, but it's raw. And this is the place of the artist. And this is place for us to get ecstatic. And instead of doing that, we are engaged with all this kind of idiotic rows about racism. Racism is so fundamental in this society. So they pick on an idiotic radio or a kind of, I don't know his name, you know, it's like, sounds to me like a mu- what's his name? The Niners, yeah. You know, I, don't, I, 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 I really didn't, took me uh, like uh, one hour, what is this? Nappy headed, you know what? 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 <laughs> nappy headed. And, uh, nappies for me, I don't know if I, my babies. I know, I know. So nappy on the head. Uh, I didn't get it. But, but without understanding the issue, this is a spin to divert the attention from the real issue: the fact that black people here in this country are oppressed like nowhere, nowhere else, and the civil rights movement fail. And I, I saw in the TV like a third of black population are with either criminal record or visited jail. And then you, you see that uh, Iraq, it's them who are fighting these illegal, idiotic wars for, this, for the, the Israeli lobby. We have to start to listen. How do we do it? I don't know. I'm talking to you. This is the only... And my only, my only way is to talk to people, to write. I never thought of myself becoming a, 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 a leader or anything. Mark Ames, writing in the Exile, said that, and he's an American living in Moscow, he's got about 30 years ago. Um, he said that it was like in America, you're driving down a highway and you see a sheep flying through the air, and you can't afford to look and see what is this all about because you'll wreck your car. Yeah. I agree. I agree. I agree. This is the issue. This is, we have, it, there is a, 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 a real serious cultural barrier that stops us from being ethically engaged. And this is something that. Um, this is something that. Um, will bring us into a colossal disaster. Because, sorry, yeah. <laughs> a lot, but I don't think that it's just the media. But it's definitely, it's a, it's a lot, it's like the media, but isn't the media a, itself a product of a cultural setup? You know, for sure, for sure. For sure. For sure, and I'm sure that you have a lot of American experts and cultural critic uh, scholars who try to identify, and some of them will say the media. I read um, a wonderful book, and I don't remember who wrote, who wrote it. <laughs> I was on the road, and I, I left it somewhere. And it basically, it's, it, it was all about film criticism early Hollywood and it was about cowboys and Indians and and he quite brilliantly showed there that America fight against the savage is a fundamental issue so when you expel the Indians annihilate them 
They are savage. But then, when you decide to destroy the most cultural country on this planet, the country brought us the best classic music, the best philosophy, the best science, Germany, they become savage like the Indians. We just turn people into savage. Next thing, we send B-52 to flatten their earth. So, whether it's media, whether it started in Hollywood, uh, very interesting question, I don't know. I'm as clever as my coffee experience. I saw it there. I'm a simple man. <laughs> Have you always been like this, or at what point you were like <laughs> <laughs> it's a, I, I spoke about it uh, yesterday um, in the means class. No, I wasn't born like that. I'm... My ancestors... It's... Are you from, uh, are you from here or, you, or, or, or are you from the Middle East? Huh? Ramallah. Not there. <laughs> but yeah, actually I did. Yeah, I'm sorry about it, man. But um, my father was fifth generation in Palestine. My grandfather spoke Arabic, could hardly speak Hebrew. My other grandfather was an ultra right wing Zionist, was second in, commander, in command of the Irgun. If you know what they are doing, the Etzel. The expulsion of Jaffa. Dear Yassin, I was raised as a right wing Jew. It was at the time of Lebanon War, I'm 43. At the time of Lebanon War, 82, something changed. For many years, I, all my childhood, I really took the, the Zionist Jewish narrative very seriously. Holocaust, victims, everybody, every, everyone persecute us. Everyone want to kill us. And then, at the time of Lebanon war, I found myself in Ansar. Ansar is basically a concentration camp. Israeli concentration camp. Not a death camp, concentration camp. Where the held Palestinians in concrete cubes, I saw them. That size, in the Israeli summer, in the Lebanese summer, 42 degrees, 43 degrees, in concrete cubes. The rest, the majority of the inmates, were kind of hanging, kind of surrounded by barbed wires. And then I realized, I was there as a soldier, that, what am I going, I'm not going to be there. You know, this is being a Nazi. And I always thought that the Nazis are bad. I realized that being in the Israeli army, serving the Israeli army, is to do everything I was educated to fight. Now, why all my friends didn't go through a, this kind of mental shift, change, Big question. I start to think now. At the same time, I started to play jazz. Now, I was raised to think that I am the best chosen asshole on this planet. That's the way Israelis are, you know, you go, you squash villages, you walk over people, you don't care. That's the way I was. 
I started to play saxophone when I was 17. Saxophone is an easy instrument between everyone can play saxophone. And then I listened to Charlie Parker and I listened to Coltrane and Miles and Cannonball Adderley and I love myself being a white chosen supremacist someone the sun shines mm -hmm. and I said no no these people Coltrane is not a Jew and Cannonball is not exactly a Jew that something is wrong here I was deluded and then when I went to the army I said and I'm now a Nazi as well Halas. <laughs> Bas. That's it. That's it. This was a, a, a beginning of a very long process, and I'm still in the process. What is interesting for me is that for many years, for many years, after I left Israel, I used to talk about the Jews, the Israelis. I learned from a very interesting philosopher, Otto Weininger. I don't look anymore at Jews. I don't write about them. They're Jews. They're British. They're Israelis. I look into myself. I look for the evil in myself. And this is why I learn more from a girl, from a waitress in a coffee shop and my stupid behavior then from a kind of a reading four chapters of Schopenhauer. I don't know, you have to tell me when, when to, when... Yeah. Thank you so much. Shukran. Thank you. And my jazz is my personal jihad. And I'm not afraid of saying the word jihad. Because jihad is a beautiful thing. It's the ultimate devotion. Lately I was engaged in quite a few discussions about Iraq, Palestine, and Afghanistan. And we all happen to ask, what is common? What, are the co what is the common denominator? And it's very easy to say, America. Thanks God, more and more people understand now that it's not only America civil war a civil, a civil right battle here I didn't realize that that was made jazz into such a powerful music it took me some years before I realized that actually Coltrane Bird Dizzy Miles, all those great people, my heroes, <sighs> sacrificed their life on the sake of beauty. It took me many years before I realized that this was their jihad. And it took me some years to understand that jazz is a form of jihad that contributes to this event. I'm going to talk to tonight uh, about the discourse of solidarity, 
about jazz and jihad. When I was a young jazz musician, America was my promised land. I was sure that sooner or later I'll live in downtown Manhattan like a jazz musician. My all the scriptures were the old Blue Note albums, Prestige, my rabbis. I'm a Jew, so I talk about rabbis, yeah. <laughs> Mentally and physically circumcised. First, I'm uh, really delighted uh, to be here. Uh, I didn't visit um, America, I didn't play in America for uh, 10 years. I was stupid enough to, uh, you know, to um, believe that there is no one to talk to in this country. You know, I uh, tended to believe that uh, you all, that's the way you're, you appear in Europe. I realize that it's very stupid to follow us, you know, there are plenty of people here that are interested in humanism and think are ethically orientated and I met quite a few wonderful people in these three days uh, and I'm really delighted to be here and thank you to Hadija and Jason and Avi and every, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> my, uh, by the way, I, I, I just got my foreskin back from the Israeli government. <laughs> uh, and this is, this is very important, this is very important. No, it was very important because now they have genetic engineering. They know how to transfer uh, foreskin, to transform foreskin into soldiers. This is why so many of the Israeli soldiers look like dickheads. And, and I, I just have it here with me. My, it's very small. No, no, I, I continue. Uh, <laughs> this was a comic relief. However, my rabbis were buried. Cannibal Adderley, Busy, Bill Evans, John Coltrane. It took me quite a few years before I realized the jazz was actually a socially motivated movement. That there was a civil, that there was a 